This is Bangkok, Thailand. I'm Cal and I've been living in this city for seven years. And if you're watching this channel, you might be thinking about moving to this city too. And a question that I commonly receive is how much money do I need to live in Bangkok? If you watched my last cost of living video, I covered my current budget, which is 1,700 US dollars per month or 60,000 Thai baht. And many people commented that it's possible to live on much less. And when it comes to budgets and spending, Bangkok can be a city of extremes. You can live in penthouse condos, eat at five-star Michelin restaurants, and go out to luxurious sky bars and nightlife. You can definitely spend a lot more than 1,700 US dollars per month here in Bangkok. But you can also spend a lot less. And in today's video, I'm gonna cover a much lower budget, just $615 per month, and answer the question, how much do you really need to live here in Bangkok? And this is based on a budget that I followed for almost a year back in 2019. I was focused on increasing my earnings, building an online business, and investing. It was a strictly needs-based survival budget for here in Bangkok. I'll go over all my daily expenses and talk about my daily life. And I hope to give you a good idea of the quality of life that you can expect living on just $615 a month here in this city. And let me know in the comments section, how does my quality of life compare with your quality of life in your city on a budget of just $615 per month? Let's get started with my daily food expenses and breakfast. I do intermittent fasting, which means that I delay my first meal until lunchtime. And even though it isn't strictly a necessity, I like coffee for breakfast. But on my strict budget, there was nothing fancy. I normally brewed a pot of coffee at home in the morning. And this is very inexpensive here, as you can buy decent coffee for around 120 baht for a 340 gram bag. And that would normally last me a couple of weeks. And before we move on, in case you like to eat breakfast, you can easily add an inexpensive breakfast here. Let's move on to lunch. And when it came to my diet, I followed one simple rule, eat like a local. After all, the average salary for a Thai person living in Bangkok is actually under $1,000 per month, and the minimum wage is less than $500. And you'll find excellent value in the local economy to serve all the local customers. Most Thai people don't cook at home. People are busy, condo kitchens are often very small, and there's a huge variety of great food available on every street corner and in every back alley. For my lunch, I would normally go to shops and vendors where I saw plenty of Thai customers. They need to serve great food every day in order to keep their customers coming back. And this is where you'll find a delicious, authentic, high quality Thai food at very affordable prices. And for me, it was a joy getting out and exploring the city and trying all the different food. One of the great things about Bangkok is that the mall food courts offer great inexpensive Thai food. And my personal favorite is Pier 21 at the Terminal 21 Mall. The vendors at Pier 21 don't actually pay rent. And so the food prices are significantly cheaper. One of my personal favorites is the Kalman Guy 32 baht for a great meal. I would normally spend under 60 baht on my lunch. I normally grabbed some fruit from a street vendor for an additional 20 baht, bringing my total daily lunch expense to around 70 baht or 2,100 baht per month. Let's move on to dinner. For dinner, I'd often stop in at local Thai restaurants or night markets. Around 4 p.m., the main streets and back soys start to fill up with all the street vendors and the smaller shops open up for dinner time. This is a food culture where people get together and eat pretty much every evening. Suffice to say, it's very easy to join the local culture, sit down, and eat a great meal. 
But as a Westerner, I also sometimes crave Western food. And in order to satisfy that craving, I often cooked at home as well. I often bought chicken breasts or chicken thighs for around 70 baht per kilogram. And you can find almost anything at the many different grocery stores around the city. Overall, whether I cooked at home or ate at a local Thai restaurant, I normally spent under 100 baht on dinner and for dessert, I added in another round of fruit for 20 baht. And my total expenses for dinner were around 120 baht per day or 3,600 baht per month. And I have to say, I never had any complaints about the meals that I ate on this budget. But before we finish with food, let's add in a little water and snacks budget. There are so many snacks available here in Bangkok that it can be very difficult to avoid snacking. Every condo has a 7-Eleven down downstairs and every street corner has vendors selling roti, coconut ice cream, pork rinds, fried bananas, lots and lots of snacks. And of course you'll also need to buy water here in Thailand. I normally bought water at 7-Eleven, but most condos also have inexpensive refill stations. And for both of these expenses, I estimate around 50 baht per day or 1,500 baht per month. Let's move on to some basic supplies. Shampoo, body wash, laundry detergent, and these are very inexpensive. You can normally find two for one sales at pharmacies like Boots or Watson's, and this is where I did my shopping. And I spent about 750 50 baht per month on my supplies. Up next, we have rent. Rent here in Bangkok is very inexpensive. My rent was 10,000 baht for a 36 square meter one bedroom condo located in the Pink Lao neighborhood near MRT Bang Yi Khan. The condo itself was quite nice with a beautiful pool and gym. It was a little bit far from the city center, but there was a beautiful park, a mall, and an inexpensive night market nearby. That's one of the great things about Bangkok. Every area has its own local food and entertainment culture. You can wander into any far-flung part of the city and find a vibrant street culture. On my $600 budget, rent was definitely my biggest expense and actually comprised about 50% of the budget. And in retrospect, I could have spent a little bit less. It's quite easy to find studio and one bedroom condos in the city for around 7,000 baht per month. Let's talk about utility costs. My 36 square meter condo cost around 700 baht per month for electricity and 100 baht per month for water. And the total expense, 800 baht per month. Let's cover phone and internet. Phone and internet service in Thailand is excellent and very affordable. I simply walked into an AIS shop with my passport and spoke with a customer service representative. I explained that I wanted an inexpensive pay-as-you-go plan and he immediately recommended a 200 baht unlimited package. It fit my needs perfectly and on my strict budget, I opted not to install an internet connection. Many condos in Bangkok don't come with an existing internet connection and that means you'll need to actually contact the service provider and sign a one year contract. At the time, I was only on a six month lease for the condo. Fortunately, my inexpensive data plan was sufficient to run a hotspot for my entire condo. So my total budget was 200 baht per month. Let's move on to transportation. And in Bangkok, you've got plenty of different transportation options. We've got the BTS and MRT public transportation trains. These have always been my preferred option. I lived next to the MRT at MRT Bangi Khan. It cost around 30 to 40 baht to get into central Bangkok. But I also used other inexpensive transportation options. My personal favorites were the river and canal ferries. My condo was actually very close to a ferry stop and it normally only costs about 10 baht per ride. This is definitely one of the fastest and most pleasant ways to travel through the city and you get some stunning views. Of course, I occasionally took a taxi or a Bolt or Grab motorbike, but I generally avoided these transportation options as they are a little bit more expensive. This is a very strict needs-based budget. How about shopping? I arrived in Bangkok with plenty of clothes and electronics. 
but clothes wear out and I had a small budget for clothes that I normally bought at Platinum Mall or local night markets. And you can find great high quality clothes for around 100 or 200 baht for a shirt or pair of shorts. And with that, we've covered the basic necessities for life here in Bangkok. But we're not finished yet. Let's talk a little bit about optional expenses like nightlife, entertainment, fitness, and travel. First, my nightlife budget was zero. Nightlife is probably the single fastest way to blow a budget here in Bangkok. When compared to other expenses like food and accommodation, alcohol is actually relatively expensive. And this is especially true if you start checking out the bougie sky bars and entertainment districts. But eliminating nightlife wasn't simply about saving money. It was also about avoiding distractions. The truth is that it's very easy to get lost in the nightlife culture here in Bangkok. But did this mean that my life was boring? Not at all. Bangkok is a very dynamic city. You can wander around almost any neighborhood in the city and find interesting stuff to do and see. And Thailand celebrates almost every holiday, which means that you have festive events occurring around the city almost every single month. A big part of my survival budget was fitness. But here in Bangkok, you don't need to spend a dime on fitness. Most condos have great gyms, mine definitely did. But personally, I preferred the parks, and most parks have absolutely fantastic workout areas. Totally free, and a much more enriching experience than my typical gym routine would be. And speaking of experience, let's talk a little bit about travel. It's very inexpensive to travel within Thailand using buses and trains. You can take a bus to Pattaya for around 150 baht. The train to Ayutthaya costs only 20 baht and Kanchanaburi is about 100 baht. I only managed to travel about once a month and I spent around 1,000 baht per month on my travel. Which brings me to a total monthly budget of 22,000 Thai baht or 615 US dollars. This was definitely a very Spartan budget, but to be honest, it was a very positive experience. I was extremely productive with work and fitness. I ate amazing and inexpensive Thai food, and I explored the city and surrounding regions. As I earned more money, I increased my budget in areas that I felt added significant value to my life. The survival budget actually changed my outlook and improved many of my habits. And to be honest, I could actually switch back to a $600 per month budget at any time if I needed to reduce my expenses and I'd be perfectly happy. 